Fultios's uh, sermons, um, two of which he delivers uh, with uh, a six weeks, six weeks interval in 860, deal with one of the, the first uh, major encounters. Uh, in a sense, there's a bit of sort of, um, a sort of slightly case of pulling the wool over people's eyes, because Photios in these sermons, which are rhetorical masterpieces, talks about how these, this huge expedition suddenly arrives outside Constantinople, these ravaging savages from the far north. Obviously, when it's been compiled in the, the um, late 11th and 12th century, when uh, they're talking about events such as this great Rus raid on Constantinople in 860, this is not within living memory. And this is where, in a sense, you've got the, the contamination of texts, or really the borrowing, the plagiarism, the taking over of texts from one source to another. Um, they are using uh, other sources. They sometimes indicate directly. They don't in this case when they talk about uh, things which Photios mentions, the miraculous salvation of Constantinople, uh, which is brought about by dipping a, a sail or a piece of holy cloth into the, the waters of the sea around Constantinople, and that sort of miraculously causes the, the, the Rus to leave. Uh, for, for Czech literature, uh, the conversion is very important because actually it's uh, normally regarded as the beginning of uh, the Czech literature. I mean, the thousand-year-old tradition of Czech literature starts with Cyril and Meth Methodius. In fact, it's interesting that various Central European nations um, actually say that these roots are theirs. Um, this actually act by the Moravian prince Rastislav was a very, very interesting piece of political expediency. Uh, I mean, the Frankish realm and the German influence were crowding Rastislav. And of course, uh, Rastislav didn't, uh, uh, he, he was a heathen, and there was this pretext, of course, the in thing was to convert to Christianity. And there was a problem because uh, with Christianity coming from the West, there would be what Rastislav didn't want, direct political influence from its very powerful neighbor. So what he actually, actually did, he uh, asked for, allegedly, missionaries who would be able to proselytize, who would be able to, uh, to spread Christianity in a language which would be understandable, intelligible to the local people who spoke the Slavonic language. This language, which differed only partially from the language of the inhabitants of Great Moravia, became the first literary language of the Slavs. It is now called Church Slavonic. The alphabet used by Constantine and pupils in Moravia is called Glagolithic. So you can see it's weird and wonderful. And the text written in it, a, uh, uh, a text written in it, looks something like this. So there, go and interpret. All this information that we have is, uh, comes actually to us from Church Slavonic texts which are very, very interesting, because they are uh, lives of those saints, Constantine and Methodius. Uh, there's quite a lot of factual information, but because they're legends, uh, well, they are really also fairy tales. This was actually very serious at that time. The legend talks about the fact that when actually the brothers were asked to create a new language for the Slavs, for the religious text to be translated into it, they were worried that they might be called heretics. So actually, they, 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 there's a serious kind of debate. Ah, but isn't it dangerous to do something like this, just to sort of pull a new language, new script out of thin air? You had a very short period of time where the Pope said, oh, this is marvelous that you are teaching it uh, in Slavonic. We we'll support it all the way. It didn't last terribly long, but for a time, uh, Constantine and Methodius were in very good books. Now, even though this was a very short period of time, there's, there's a fairly considerable uh, literary heritage. And as I said at the beginning, both the Czech Republic and Slovakia actually derive their roots or the roots of their literature from this. And they are very, very proud of these few decades and of these very, very ancient texts.